get too comfortable now. Don't get too comfortable. You know what to do, right? You know what to do, right? All right, everybody come stand up for me. Come on, stand up. Just a light. Light jump. Just feel light on your toes. Now, if you're feeling, if you're feeling it, get your arms up. Turn to your neighbor and say, Board of Champions! Board of Champions! Board of Champions! Alright, good job, we're having fun. Good job. Good, I'll see you. Great, great. Okay, well, happy Monday. Welcome, welcome. I'm Dr. Yachter, if we haven't met. I see some, uh, some new, Hi. new people in the house. Guests, welcome. Um, if you're not a guest, uh, how many of you guys have been to workshops before? Raise your hand. Good, good. Keep your, keep your hands up if you've been to uh, five or more workshops. Ten or more workshops. Twenty or more workshops. Thirty? Forty? Fifty? Sixty? Seventy? Eighty? Ninety? A hundred? I think, I think Denise is... You guys are up there. Denise, probably seventy? Ninety? A hundred? Okay, so I like to do that, have a little bit of fun. We've been doing these workshops for a really long time, over 20 years. So, uh, yeah, so this is, uh, this is fun for me. This is something I enjoy doing. I enjoy the looks on the faces of everybody when you start learning, and because uh, when you stop learning and you stop growing, what happens? You start dying, yeah. So, so when I start uh, with the rapid fire stuff on all the uh, info we're going to go over tonight, um, the head's gonna kind of cock to the side, and remember the old RCA dog like that? Like, huh? Come again? You're gonna learn some things that um, that are gonna challenge your belief systems. Um, pretty much, uh, very well contra contrary to everything that you've learned about heart health and nutrition, and it's definitely gonna challenge you. I'm gonna challenge you. How many of you guys are here because you want to get healthier? Say I. Many of you are uh, taking prescription drugs and um, you know, you're maybe aware of the side effects, maybe not aware of some of the side effects. Maybe some of you guys are coming here because you're concerned with your health right now and you want to learn what you can do to improve it, maybe reduce, get off some of those medications. Well, I'm not going to let you leave here tonight without uh, many of the resources that you're going to need. First and foremost, the courage and the evidence to make the right decision. Uh, I'm always very careful to uh, tell you that there's a time and a place where you're supposed to take medication and use doctors, but you never, ever, ever, ever outsource the responsibility of your health to your doctor. Right or right? Right. Who's in charge of your health? You are. You are, yes. So I'm going to give you lots of information tonight to help you make the best decision that you can ever make concerning your heart health now and for ever more. So next month, uh, you know, as we, as we do these workshops, month after month, next month we have cancer prevention workshop. Again, you know, the heart smart and the cancer prevention, these are the bookends which um, will add years to your life. I can promise you that. So you don't want to miss this one, it's October 14th. It will make a, a significant impression on you. Um, that being said, let's just kind of move right into um, the theme of, I guess, really what we're talking about here tonight, because um, we're, we're talking about literally the number one disease killer, which uh, strikes mercilessly and unpredictably. So I, wanna, I just want to show you this clip real quick. Uh, I was at a restaurant having dinner with some friends, and all of a sudden I just collapsed and suffered a major heart attack. I passed away. It was considered sudden death. 20% of heart attacks present with sudden death, meaning acute cardiac arrest, loss of circulation, the heart stops immediately. I was told there was a couple of doctors there that assisted me with CPR, and, and that kind of helped me uh, to get by until the rescue got there. He was taken straight to the catheter. Uh, we put a catheter in and opened his artery up, I would say probably within 19 minutes. The most important thing about sudden cardiac death is not just your heart and restarting your heart, but you also want to prevent neuro neurological damage. We have capabilities 
of neuroprotection, where we essentially cool the patient and cool the brain, it gives time to the brain to receive the circulation and limit the damage. After three days, we were able to bring the sedation down. And guess what? David was there. He was back. First woke up, uh, I was pretty groggy, but like within three hours or so, I, I started uh, recognizing some of the faces around me, and I saw my brothers and my son, and that's when I was told uh, what had happened to me. Well, I'm taking life a lot easier now. I can handle stress now much better than I used to, and obviously I'm not smoking anymore. I have no lasting effects at all. I was very fortunate and blessed that I, I survived all this and without any problems. Yeah, fortunate and, uh, and blessed. But I tell you, he's, he got off uh, easy, you know. It doesn't always work out like that, does it? You know, so he died suddenly. He was, he was out to dinner and just, that was it. And uh, it was just sudden, just like that. Which happens about 300,000 people a year. And, you know, 10 minutes before that happened, was he healthy? He had no symptoms at all? He was fine? And then all of a sudden, he literally, he, he flatlines with a heart attack. So you don't see this coming. And it could be happening in any, any one of us right now with that or cancer. The absence of symptoms does not indicate the presence of health, right? So tonight, we're gonna to talk about what you can do to prevent health problems, uh, particularly heart problems, but I'm gonna give you the indicators to tell you which way you may be moving, for better or worse. Also, the things that we need to look at. Number one disease killer for men and women, e e every 33 seconds, someone dies from a heart attack. Six times more women die every year from heart attacks than breast cancer. Did you know that? So there's more people dying today from heart attacks and heart disease than ever before. It's, it's, uh, it gets worse and worse and worse. So we're going to set the record straight tonight, <clears throat> starting with cholesterol, one of the biggest myths to ever perpetu be perpetuated on mankind. Some of you may be uh, aware of this, maybe not, but we are going to set the record straight. Every uh, fact that I swing your way is not going to be shooting from the hip, it's going to be coming from medical journals. The doctor, the, the journals that your doctors are supposed to be reading that are still prescribing you these things. So number one, lowering your cholesterol to very low levels does what? Not reduce your risk of a heart attack, all right, or early death. Studies indicate that bringing your cholesterol down increases your risk of developing other health problems and even shortening your life expectancy if you're trying to bring your cholesterol down. So let's, let's learn a little bit about that. Um, is cholesterol important for you? Yes. God doesn't make junk. I mean, you know, clearly your, your, your brain is 25% cholesterol. It's only 2% of your body's mass, but 25% of your brain is made up of cholesterol. That should tell you something. Uh, maybe it serves a purpose, right? So cholesterol forms a membranes on not just brain cells, but every cell in your body, the cell membrane is made up of what? Cholesterol, it's really important. And that's what gives the cell membrane functionality in terms of allowing nutrients to pass in and toxins to pass out. Cholesterol in the brain serves as a powerful antioxidant. How many of you guys have heard of antioxidants before? What do antioxidants do? They, they help get toxins out, and it's part of the cancer killing uh, recipe in your body. Um, it, 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 um, it wars against damaging effects of free radicals, anti-aging and anti-cancer. So when you shut that mechanism off, what are you doing to your risk of cancer? There you have it. So what happens to all these benefits of a, as a result of lowering your cholesterol? Out the window. But why are we doing it? Because we want to prevent what? A heart attack or heart disease? Is, is that really the best strategy? That's the question we want to ask ourselves tonight. So this comes from the American Journal of Cardiology. Again, prominent medical journal published, doctors supposed to be reading this stuff. Researchers followed 300 adults diagnosed with heart failure for an average of 3.7 years, some up to 11 and a half years. <clears throat> Those who were taking the cholesterol drugs, you guys know statins are cholesterol drugs, right? Those who were taking the cholesterol drugs had the lowest levels of LDL, the lowest LDL levels were found to have the highest rates of mortality. The highest death rate was the people who had the lowest LDL. So when you get your blood test back and your doctor says, I don't like the way your cholesterol looks, usually what are they talking about? The LDL, and they give you a medication to reduce that part. And what are, what are the cardiology studies showing? That the lower you're pulling that LDL, that cholesterol down, the higher your risk of early death. 
Conversely, people with higher levels of cholesterol had a lower risk of death. So how do, how do statins affect your brain? Because again, you know, getting back to the cholesterol being important for your brain, the neurons in your brain, how many think neurons uh, are important? <laughs> yeah. So neurons in your brain, they need to be firing on all cylinders. When that stops, things slow down, you forget people, you forget things, and you start moving toward dementia and Alzheimer's. So that's why people on cholesterol medications are four times more likely to develop Alzheimer's disease. Because the neurons rely on this cholesterol. Um, and guess what the shuttle mechanism is to get the cholesterol to these neurons? LDL. The so-called what? Bad cholesterol. But what you need to look at is this LDL is not cholesterol. What does LDL stand for? Low density lipoprotein. The very definition of itself, lipoprotein is not a cholesterol. It's a what? A protein. That's what it is. So that's what shuttles the cholesterol to the brain so your brain cells can fire. You can make the neuronal connections, that you can remember things. You can solve problems. You can make decisions. All the things that are compromised with Alzheimer's disease are instigated and provoked by what? Lowering your cholesterol. Yes. So fundamental role of LDL in the brain to transport life-giving cholesterol to the neuron where it performs critically important functions. So here's a question I get from everybody, and you may be wondering this right now. Okay, so I get it. I shouldn't be on cholesterol medications. So doc, what can I take naturally to lower my cholesterol? Some of you guys are still looking for that answer. <laughs> no. I got you, Joy, right? Oh, see, that's a trick question. It's a trick question. Because what you're learning is taking your cholesterol down with drugs or with supplements, probably not the best thing to do. The studies are clearly showing the higher your cholesterol, the better off you are. <clears throat> Framingham study, 1,900 participants. They published this in 2005. They tested people for memory, learning, concept formation, concentration, attention, reasoning, organizational abilities. All those things that are compromised with Alzheimer's patients. Here's what they found. The people with the total cholesterol, less than 200, perform least well on the cognitive tests. And the people at the highest cholesterol levels scored the what? Highest. The highest. So what is that telling you? The lower your cholesterol goes, the worse your brain works. Okay, so if you want to retain brain function, you have a conversation with your doctor, just remember this. When they look at your total cholesterol, they're gonna say, okay, it's too high, it's 238, it's 235, it's 229, whatever, 260. I don't like the way that looks. You need to take statin. statin. You need to get on this drug. And you're gonna be like, well, gee, doc, um, do I have to take this? Yes, you have to take it, or you could have a heart attack. It's very, very dangerous, it's very serious. Yeah. <laughs> And there goes your blood pressure, and then you're going to get a prescription for that, too. And there goes your anxiety, right? Okay, so, no. God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, right? You have to stop, breathe, collect yourself, and go come back to this point. And just say to yourself, wait a second, there's evidence here that backs this up. I understand my doctor is trying to do the right thing for me. They have my best interest in mind. There's a standard of care, and if they don't prescribe that to you, they could be liable for malpractice. Their license could be on the line. That doesn't help you out any. They should be reading this. They should be you know, acting accordingly to what's in the journals. So you have to watch out for yourself. Say, okay, doc, so I, I appreciate that, but I'm going to try to uh, take care of this on my own. And so... You can try to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them, but I wouldn't recommend that, you know? What I would say is just, okay, take the yeah. prescription right. and do otherwise. <laughs> yeah, because you know, I, I, you know if, if, you, if you have high blood pressure or you have diabetes, the last thing I would tell you is stop taking those medications like today, like before you leave the office, go cold, cold turkey. Don't do that, no. But with cholesterol, completely different story. You could stop right now. You could take your last pill today, and it would be the best thing that you ever did. There would be no repercussions and no increased risk for any kind of disease, let alone heart attack. And uh, before we get done tonight, you'll see the evidence. The jury's out, guys. You'll see it. Parkinson's disease, journal movement disorders, 
people with the lowest LDL cholesterol were at increased risk for Parkinson's by approximately what? 350%. So when it comes to neurodegenerative diseases, clearly when you reduce your cholesterol, you're affecting your nervous system, in particular the brain. Neurodegenerative diseases are provoked by low cholesterol, whether you take it down with a drug or with a supplement or, or even diet, you know? So I hope this is starting to make sense. So you guys are tracking with me so far? Okay. Even more reasons to avoid statin drugs. They deplete CoQ10. How many of you guys have heard of CoQ10? What is that? It's a necessary molecule that is made inside the cell for energy. And in particular, your heart needs that as a muscle, right? So what, is Co what, is, uh, Co uh, what happens to CoQ10? The cholesterol and that statin drugs deplete it. They block the liver from making it, um, the, the enzyme necessary for that. So. If you decide you're going to still take your cholesterol medication, at least take a CoQ10 supplement. I mean, that's what most people do. But the vast majority of my patients usually wind up stop taking their statins. Um, they inhibit the production of vitamin K2. You know what vitamin K2 does? This is interesting. It protects your arteries from calcification. Imagine that. A heart medication which blocks your body <laughs> from preventing calcification. That's why some studies have shown that taking cholesterol drugs increases your risk of atherosclerosis. How about that? Hmm. Cancer. So statin drugs show that long-term, research shows that long-term statin use 10 years or longer more than doubles women's risk of breast cancer. National Cancer Institute did a study of 12 and a half thousand men and women. The men with the lowest cholesterol levels were the most likely to get cancer. There you have it. How much more do we need? Diabetes, recent study. Statins double your risk of what? Type 2 diabetes. And triple the risk when taken for more than two years. What did you just see between that and cancer? Clearly, the longer you stay on cholesterol medications, the more complications you're going to have and the shorter your life expectancy will be. So the decision is yours, but obviously the research is all there. It's just nobody gives it to you. Your doctor doesn't talk to you about this stuff. Yeah. So, impaired fertility. Statins are a category X medication. Mm -hmm. Dr. Vieira, are you kidding me? <laughs> Hola, amigo. Que bueno. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> and so, what is a category? What is a category X medication? Listen to this. It causes serious birth defects. So, you should never be used with pregnant women or those who are planning pregnancy. Nice, isn't it? Interesting. Risk versus the benefit. So any, aside of all the side effects that you guys um, have just learned about, any long-term studies where they do show a benefit from statin drugs are linked to the reduction of inflammation. That's it, that's, what, that's, that's all it does. It has a slight anti-inflammatory effect. That's the only benefit that you would get from a statin drug. However, when they did long-term studies, here's what that little bitty benefit translated to. 2015 systematic review uh, found that statin drugs benefit just 1% of treated participants. Out of 100 people treated with statins for five years, one person has one less heart attack. So again, is the risk worth the benefit? Journal of Family Practice, so when it comes to changes in sexual function, um, clearly, uh, I mean, low testosterone levels are pretty much consistent with people on cholesterol medication. Twice as likely to have low testosterone levels if you're on cholesterol meds. Cholesterol is a precursor for hormones. In order for hormones in your body, like testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, any hormone in your body to be synthesized, you have to have what? Cholesterol is the foundation of it. So when you start messing with that recipe, you start having problems like this also. Rectile dysfunction, decreased libido, all been published in medical journals. So, but Dr. Yachter, is there such a thing as dangerously high cholesterol? I don't know, I mean, the doctor said my cholesterol's 300. It's 400. I can't walk around like that, can I? Sure. <laughs> Cholesterol, if it's 300 or 400, is still a very poor predictor of whether or not you're going to have a heart attack. It's not your cholesterol that's going to give you a heart attack. 
2018 review presented substantial evidence that total cholesterol and LDL levels are what? Not an indication of heart disease risk. And that statin treatment is of doubtful benefit as a form of primary prevention for this reason. <clears throat> medical doctors in England, the British Medical Journal, they're um, presenting to Parliament right now full out investigation into the fraud that's per been perpetuated by the drug makers and the, and the lobbyists and the lawmakers and the people who have allowed this to go on for so long. There is no benefit. In the past 30 years, this is, this is one of the doctors who's launched the investigation, cardiologist, the CM Alharda. He said, in the past 30 years, there's been 44 randomized control studies that reveal no cardiovascular mortality benefit from, look, look at this, from diet or various drug trials. Again, we're, we're, we're talking about no benefit to lowering the cholesterol whether you reduce it from drugs, supplements, or your diet. Try to, take, try to have a low cholesterol diet, what does it say? No cardiovascular mortality benefit. It's not gonna reduce your risk of death. Most, most conspicuous was the recent Accelerate trial with over 12,000 patients at high risk of heart disease revealed no reductions in heart attack, stroke, or death despite a 37% reduction in LDL cholesterol. It doesn't matter how much you take your cholesterol down and what you do it with. We're going in the wrong direction if we're taking our LDL and our cholesterol down. Are we starting to get the, uh, the theme here? Yeah. Yes? Yeah. Journal of the American Medical Association, 1994. 1,000 participants in a four-year Yale study. People with low total cholesterol had just as many heart attacks as those with high cholesterol. 75% of the people hospitalized with a heart attack have cholesterol in the normal range. Wow, is your head spinning yet? <laughs> are you, or are you getting agitated because of the injustice and the lies and the ignorance perpetuated by people who are supposed to be protecting us and our families? See what it is? That's what it is out there. Like the Titanic when it went down. There was a, there's like all these lifeboats and you know what, There's more, there was more room in the lifeboats. More people could have survived. All these people died in the water. The majority of the people died, but th there, were more, there was more room in the lifeboats. And that's what it is out there. It's the cold Arctic. And you know, this is a lifeboat in here. Where you guys are at right now, this is safe. This is safety for you. This is life saving. And this is what agitates me. This is what irks me, the injustice that's going on out there. The people that don't know. Forget about the doctors. I don't think they're out there trying to hurt people. I think that's a that's big pharma, really. Yeah. It's just profit and greed. That's what comes before people's lives. Oh, yeah. But it's our brothers and sisters where it's for lack of knowledge that they're perishing. People need to be here to get this information. They're not going to find it unless you lead them to that. Lead them to the truth. It's the ugly truth. Yeah, that's what's sad about it. New England Journal of Medicine, 2005, found that patients with low CRP levels, does everybody know what CRP is? C-reactive protein, which is an indicator of what kind of systemic inflammation that you have, inflammation that runs rampant through your body. So the CRP is a blood test that your doctor can do, but most of the time they don't. So when they tell you your cholesterol is really high, whether you're at risk for a heart attack because your cholesterol is high, your answer should be, gee, doc, what about my CRP levels? Because no matter what my LDL level cholesterol is, the Journal of New England Journal of Medicine showed that my LDL really doesn't matter as far as a predictor of a heart attack. What really matters is my what? CRP. This medical journal published a study showing people had more heart attacks if their CRP was elevated rather than their... LDL level. It didn't matter what the LDL level. The predictor of an imminent heart attack or cardiovascular episode was predicted by what? CRP. CRP. So what do you need to be tested for to determine whether or not you're at a high risk for a heart attack? If, you're, if your cholesterol is high, your doctor said it's high, and you're concerned, maybe you do have a concern. Maybe you should be concerned about that. But if your inflammation levels are in normal range, you don't have a concern, guys. 
If, you're, if your inflammation levels are in normal range, you don't have a concern with a 300 or 400 level cholesterol. Now, if you've got a 300, 400 level cholesterol and you're inflammatory, your CRP level markers are in, are in the danger zone, you have something that you need to fix there. So how do you know? You get a test. So get, if you're going through a blood test with your doctor, you can ask them to order that. If you don't uh, want to do that, or you don't want to wait till the next time that you go there, we cannot have, that, have you do it here. It's a finger prick, and... Sorry. That silence hurts, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's painful silence. <laughs> I love you, Vianna. I'm so sorry. It's all good, it's all good. So, so with a little finger prick, we put it on a, on a index card, and we send it to a lab, and we can do the same thing here. So basically, it's an inflammation test report. It not only tests your CRP, but it also shows another marker, which is your vitamin D level, which is also a predictor of cardiovascular disease. So again, this is something that can be done here in this office, and if it's something that you need help with, just ask us and we can help you with that. But that's what you need to look for, inflammation, not your cholesterol. Are you guys with me so far? Yeah. Other drug side effects, calcium channel blockers. I know many of us in the room are on this right now. Cause an increase, 26% uh, increased risk of having a heart attack or heart failure. Um, metformin increases your risk of, or chances of dying from heart problems by what? 250%. So it's another thing, you know, you need to get to our diabetes workshop so you can see what to do to, to reduce and get off these blood sugar medications. Because they, they, I mean, it's clear, it's out there, it's been there for a long time that these, these side effects from these medications definitely uh, shorten your life expectancy, you have serious side effects. Um, last one I wanted to cover with you, the blood pressure medication, the presser, metoprolol, especially, I've seen a lot with the metoprolol, how it causes confusion, memory lapses, um, your memory starts failing you, recall, this, that, that one in particular I've seen do a lot of damage. Atenolol, lisinopril, um, it, it, in general, those are the side effects, chest pain, shortness of breath, depression, confusion, memory, hallucinations, constipation, diarrhea, impotence, headache, fatigue, insomnia. So you guys know how this works. And if, there's a, if there is a way to reduce and get off of these, then the, then the answer or the question really should be how. So if you're on Valsartan, uh, this was recalled, blood pressure medication, for containing a what? A cancer-causing impurity. Um, so again, that's, that's one of the side effects of blood pressure medication. I forgot to mention cancer. Valsartan, a few months later, Losartan was recalled. Same thing, cancer-causing impurity. Herbisartan, so there was four blood pressure drugs that were recalled uh, last year by the FDA. And I still see people coming in here taking those things. Yeah, and I'm not quite sure why their doctor still has them on those. I, I, I don't know the answer to that. But again, who's responsible for your health? You are. you are, yeah. So what is normal blood pressure? I mean, if you're, listen, if you're 50 years old, 60 years old, your, your blood pressure, your normal blood pressure is not going to be 120 over 80. I mean, let's, let's be real. You know, it's, you know, as you get older, you know, the, the, the blood vessels, you know, they, they become more static. They're not as flexible. Your blood pressure is going to go up. It's, it's normal for your systolic number to go up as you age. Um, so for you to be taking a blood pressure medication to get it down to 120 over 80, you know, that may not be the best thing for you either. Now, um, there's a lot of things that have to be considered here. And if you're not exercising, like consistently, at least four or five days a week, you, know, you may not have an alternative. Um, but if you start exercising and your, your heart is pumping strong and it can get the blood and the oxygen and the nutrients to the, to the distal tissues, um, maybe your blood pressure will come down substantially to the point where you don't need to be on that medication. You know, if you lose, you know, 15 pounds, you double your chances of normalizing your blood pressure. If you're eating good, if you're less inflamed, if you're, if you're getting adjusted, do all these things, you decrease your, your chances of having to be on one of these. Now, again, we don't play with blood pressure. Why? You could have a stroke. But the question is, are you doing your part? Or are you just relying on the medication to do its part? So these are the things that you know, I want you to think about because you know, how important is it and how much of a priority is it 
Um, and how committed are you to taking the next step with your health? I know that's why you're here. Mayo Clinic says if you're, if you're a healthy adult, 60 or older, your treatment goal is less than what? 150 over 90. Okay, so if you're not on blood pressure medication and your blood pressure ranges 150 over 90, still considered normal range. Got it? Okay. Most important modifiable risk factors related to heart attack risk include smoking. I don't think we have too many people here that smoke. Excess alcohol. I won't dig deeper on that. Um, lack of aerobic exercise, which we talked about, right? All right, what we didn't talk about is being overweight and your carbohydrates. So that is definitely gonna affect your heart health, in particular your blood pressure. So let's, uh, let's talk about that. I've seen significant changes when people lose weight. I mean, their blood pressure comes down, their blood sugar comes down. Um, they are in their prime of their life. They are loving life when they drop 20, 30 pounds. There's no arguing, there's no denying. Ask anybody who's done that in our office and they will tell you they're happier and they feel better than they ever have. But as it pertains to what we're talking about tonight, again, this is when you knock off 15, 10, 15 pounds, you're doubling your chances of normalizing your blood pressure. 22% uh, 22 pound weight loss reduces your heart attack risk by what? 70, 75%, yeah. Hello, my name is Tim Kennedy. Uh, in the first 40 days of this program, I lost 35 pounds, exactly where I wanted to be. I got off my blood pressure medicine, I got off my cholesterol medicine, and I got off my heart burn medicine. And I feel wonderful. Thank you. That's great. And uh, so, so that's the process. You lose the weight. But what the, what's the outcome? You reduce, get off the medications. If that's possible, you start seeing that happen. And that's the most important thing, you know, a life transformed. But there is a process, you know, there's steps that have to be followed. There's a recipe. And we have a program that's very, very successful. If you're not aware of that, we have a weight loss program. And it's guaranteed. You lose at least 15 pounds uh, inside of 30 days or we put you through a second round at our expense. And it works. And you not just lose weight, you lose body fat, you lose visceral fat, the fat around your organs. We, we raise your metabolism. You know, when you start this program and you get weighed in, we put you on a biometric scale, and your metabolic age for many of you, you know, if you're 60 years old, your metabolic age is probably 90. You know, when you get done with this program, your metabolic age is, is usually less than your chronological age. How many of you guys would like your metabolism working like uh, a 40-year-old? Yeah. yeah. So, so again, there's a, there's, a, there's a recipe to that. There's a, there's a specific process and protocol and we've been very successful. We've been doing it for years and years and years, and there's a science to it that eliminates the guesswork, and there's a guarantee so you can't lose. And we've been running a, a special, a back-to-school special for the last month or so. It just, ha it just so happens that that $100 off special ends today. So if it's something that you're interested in, let Deborah know, and she can tell you, you know, how the whole thing works and maybe set up an appointment to do a consultation, get you weighed in, review your goals, and see if it's a good fit for you or not. Um, okay, that being said, I think this is a good time to uh, take a mental break and uh, want to recognize some uh, patients here, which we really, really appreciate. And um, so my dynamic staff, uh, as they make um, their way up here, <coughs> Deborah and Tamara and Victoria, put your hands together for our awesome staff. All right. Okay, so um, the first one is for uh, coming to six or more workshops. So we want to recognize somebody special, and this is our Elevation Health Core for University degree. We're giving this to Erman Thompson for six or more workshops. Erman, give a round of applause. Okay, next award we have is for perfect, adjust uh, perfect adjustment attendance. And uh, these are for people who are like, like clockwork, dead on with their appointments, never ever missing appointments. And there's many of you in the room, but we want to particularly recognize these three people. And that's uh, Andrea Watkins, Gloria Penn, and Elizabeth Johnson. Everybody, give them a big round of applause. Yeah, nice little medal to crown you guys with. Awesome, awesome. And lastly, I want to bring up, uh, let me see, Bonnie and Charmaine. Can you guys come up here for a second? 
Body and Charmian. Yeah, come on up. Come on up. You guys all right? Yes. Moving kind of slow. <laughs> what happened? They're surprised. They're surprised? Okay. <laughs> all right. So, um, just, uh, you know, brief background. Um, we, we uh, let's see. Bonnie referred Charmaine. Bonnie, uh, I remember sitting down with her and she was telling me, uh, was just, your whole day is just going to doctors, right? Yeah. One doctor to the next, like the whole week, the whole schedule, it's just going to doctors and on all kind of type, types of medications, a lot of pain, a lot of issues. And start taking care of her, not long, a few adjustments, start feeling better, start seeing the light. And what does she do? She refers Charmaine. And uh, Charmaine saw the light. <laughs> and she got she got she got very very uh, she got very good results very quickly. Her son's under care now, um, but you know I just I really appreciate how much you do to take care of yourself, both of you guys. But I really appreciate you reaching out and changing and saving lives. So every once in a while at a workshop like this, we'll have a lifesaver award. And uh, we want to we want to recognize the life transformed, right? Still a work in progress, but we also want to recognize the life saver. And uh, so we've got a, you know a few goodies in here for you, just a little uh, gift, a token of our appreciation. And we just we love our appreciation. Well. Let's do this. Let's uh, come stand up and we're gonna turn and face the person on your right. Put your hands on their shoulders. And I want you to squeeze, squeeze all that, uh, squeeze all that stress out. Yeah, squeeze all that stress out, all that tension out. And now you're gonna do a karate chop. You're gonna do a karate chop. No. Easy does it. All right, so we're going to turn around and love your other neighbor. <laughs> we are making friends, making friends. All right, karate chop, karate chop. This is fun, isn't it? Nobody's going to sleep now. All right, give yourself a round of applause. All right, heads up, heads up, heads up, coming at you. Okay, glad, glad to see we're, uh, we're still awake. That's good, that's good. All right, show goes on. <clears throat> so, back to our topic, does cholesterol cause coronary artery disease? Can, if you have high cholesterol, can it somehow make its way into your arteries and cause a problem? Because everybody knows when the arteries clog up and you know everything hardens up, then then you block the blood and that's when you have the heart attack, right? That's when you have myocardial infarction. Now, does cholesterol actually cause that? Is that really part of the process? Because I turned it down. I turned it. It's a new so, so here's, here's what it comes down to. Coronary artery disease has more to do with oxidized cholesterol. So it's not the cholesterol, it's what happens to the cholesterol. How many of you here last month when we were talking about the, uh, was it diabetes? It was last month or the month before, we talked about diabetes and how the sugar deforms the proteins. Remember we talked about the, um, the A1C and what that is a measurement of? That's a measurement of the sugar binding to the protein, the blood hemoglobin. Remember that? Okay. So what did we say LDL is? It is a? Protein. 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 Very good. So when sugar attaches to any protein in your body, it's called glycation, right? Mm -hmm. And what does it do? It physically deforms that protein to where it can no longer serve its function. And when, what it does is it, it gathers free radicals and it becomes inflamed and it becomes oxidized. What is oxidation? You guys have seen oxidation. Rust. 
leave rust, leave an apple out on the table, you're deforming the molecules. So when that happens inside of your arteries, then you have a problem. Then that junk just starts to build up. But what does it have to be triggered by? Not, it's not the cholesterol in and of itself. It's the physical deformity of the cholesterol by what? Sugar. Yeah. Sugar attaches itself to LDL, changes the molecule shape, increases free radical production, and ultimately inflammation. And what is, it, what is, what is the test for inflammation? Yeah. Yeah. CRP, very good. So this cardiologist and neurologist <coughs> really kind of expound and really explain the mechanism of how the arteries actually swell shut. Um, Dr. David Perlmutter, prominent neurologist, he said, uh, unbridled inflammation is a fundamental cause of early death associated with coronary artery disease, cancer, diabetes, Alzheimer's, and virtually every other disease that you can imagine. Every disease known to mankind has its foundation set by inflammation. Yeah. And this cardiologist said, in, the injury and inflammation to our blood vessels is caused by the high carb, low fat diets. Um, recommended by years by mainstream. High, high carb, low fat diet. How does that cause inflammation? Well, the carbs, the toxins, the bad fats, highly inflammatory when they hit the cell membranes. It's almost like a Brillo brush going through your arteries. Ooh, I see you wincing. <laughs> okay, now we got the point. <clears throat> so what happens? Ooh, maybe the plaque that your body makes, the plaque that's deposited in the arteries, isn't the cause of the problem, it's the effect as it comes to the rescue from that irritation from the inflammation. Hmm. How about that? So uh, Dr. Perlmutter writes about that in his book called Grain Brain, which is can't recommend that book highly enough to everybody here. The Grain Brain. You'll find all the research that we're talking about here tonight and more. Um, if you're seriously considering getting off of some of these medications, you'll have all the medical research in there you need to help you make any decision or discuss with your doctor because, again, it's, he's a medical doctor, a neurologist. So this is what it looks like. This is what it comes down to so that you understand. If you look at the cross-section of that artery that's clear, that has no inflammation, no obstruction, is there any blood flow that's being blocked in that artery? No. Is it possible for a person with an artery like that to have a three or 400 level cholesterol? Yes. Very good, yeah. As long as, what's in normal range? The inflammation. As long as their CRP, their inflammation is in normal range. If they have a low sugar, low carb, diet, if they have lots of anti-inflammatory nutrients and an anti-inflammatory diet, sure, they could have that going on all day long. No problem with the, with the cholesterol level. But <clears throat> we see this cross-section, if you cut through that artery, you see the, the walls of the artery are what? Inflamed. They're starting to swell shut. And this person could go to the doctor and the blood pressure is going to be up, right? Because the narrowing of the artery is going to force the blood pressure up. And the doctor, by way of the test, is going to not only recommend the blood pressure medication, but what else? Cholesterol. Yeah. And you're going to, based on your age, yeah, you're going to fit into those parameters, those guidelines, and you're going to get a prescription for that as well. Okay, so no discussion on lifestyle change, no discussion on reducing the sugars, inflammation, you're never going to have a discussion on any of that. You're going to walk out of there <clears throat> with that cholesterol and blood pressure prescription. Keep, keep going to town on your breads, pasta, rice, potatoes, your soft drinks. And your condition, the cause of it, is not going to get better, it's getting what? Worse. And then you wind up with that. And you wind up with that shutting off all the blood supply to your heart, right? So your atrium, right? You'll have, you're going to you're going to wind up with uh, atrial ventricular fibrillation. You're going to eventually wind up with a heart attack. And you're going to wind up in the ER, right, in the intensive care unit. After you have that heart attack, they're going to look at your profile and you'll be like, oh, well, that's, okay, that's interesting. So this person's on blood pressure medication and they're on cholesterol medication and they had a heart attack. But what did we just say? 75% of the people who are, who are in ICU who've had a heart attack have cholesterol in the what? Normal range. 
they're, they're taking, they're on statin medications. And that's the process. Do you guys get that? You can be on all the medications till the cows come home, just treating effects. But if you don't correct the cause, the source, and the roots, you still wind up being affected by, or God forbid, dying from these diseases that are treatable, preventable, and curable, and reversible with proper lifestyle. Right or right? Right. Yeah. So this is what we have to start with. We gotta start with this. Get, get rid of the grains, you know, listen. Um, gosh, I, I had rice last night. Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. <laughs> but I say that just so that you understand nobody's perfect. No perfect people allowed. I'm not perfect. But you know what? I'm pretty conscious of everything that goes in my mouth, especially when I know I don't feel good, my energy's not right, and my weight isn't where I want it to be. I make a concerted effort to, to stop and not do things that are going to make it worse. I'll give you an example. I flew. Whenever I fly, I, you know, my immune system takes a beating. So came back from Atlanta. Just didn't feel good. Yesterday, I did not feel good. I was tired. Today, my energy is not 100%. So I knew that. I knew I had a workshop tonight. I'm like, I need to protect my energy. I need to regain my health and my strength. So last night, Yvette goes to church. I stayed home and rested. I went in the morning. I'm like, honey, I don't, I'm just going just gonna to relax. I don't want to go back. She pulls out all the food, the leftovers. So what do we have there? We have... We have the pasta. We have the pasta. We have the we have the, the, the meat sauce. We've we've got all this stuff, and you know I'm looking at that, and then there's chicken soup, right? There's chicken soup. So I'm like, man, that spaghetti looks really good. <laughs> you know, that spaghetti looks really good. That that meat sauce, even though it's grass fed, what do I know? It's going to cause inflammation. It's going to cause a lot more inflammation. But here we have we have organic free range chicken. We got cabbage in there. We got some carrots. We got some you know, all kinds of vegetables, and I'm like, this is what my body needs right now. This is what it needs. I put some olive oil in there, I made some green beans, I had more olive oil, and that's all I had. And then I got in bed at, you know, nine o'clock, and I had a good night's rest. So you have to be conscious of where you're at. You're either gonna make decisions that make your health better, or make it worse. And I'm not saying, again, I'm not saying I'm perfect, but at some point, if you're serious about getting your blood pressure and your blood sugar and your cholesterol down, uh, and getting things under control, you've got to have <clears throat> the wherewithal to stand guard at what crosses the threshold of your mouth. And you have to take steps on eliminating this stuff, at least for the short term. You know, like if you go cold turkey on the, on the rice, bread, potato, pasta, and you don't have that for the next month, you're not going to keel over and die. You know, fruits, vegetables, you know, they, they got all the, you know, all the carbohydrates you need with fiber, and that's actually better for you. But once you get things under control, is there anything wrong with having rice, you know, one day a week, or pasta one day a week, or going over to have a, a piece of pizza uh, one or two days a week? You know, no, there isn't. But for the majority of your week, you should be eating for health. You should be eating for performance. You should be conscious of the fact that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And it's, 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 it doesn't work as well when you're sick trying to serve the Lord. Right. Right. It doesn't work as well. No matter what you do. So, <clears throat> take inventory of the stuff when you go home. Look in your pantry and, and see what belongs there and what doesn't. And don't think twice about throwing it in the garbage. And just start to make better choices. Buy better things. Make sure you're looking for stuff that doesn't have hydrogenated fats, that doesn't have these toxins. Your ingredients in your food, you should be able to pronounce, number one, and number two, it, sh it shouldn't be made in the laboratory. <laughs> so if it doesn't fit those two criteria, it doesn't belong in your body. Um, so you, got, you get the point, right? And corn is not a vegetable, you guys know this, right? Corn's not a vegetable, it's a, it's a, it's a pesticide receptacle that, that will significantly increase your risk of senile dementia and Alzheimer's. We've gone over this in previous workshops. I'm not going to open up that can of worms now, but stay away from it. Okay, so, so look, let's just simplify this. The picture on the right shows the avenue to shutting your arteries down. The pic, the, I'm sorry, the picture on the left. Picture on the left. Picture on the right shows the pathway to opening up your arteries, to reducing inflammation. Now you see basically a paleo diet there. It's, 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 
proteins, fruits, vegetables, and good healthy fats. You're not going to go wrong with something like that. You know, different people do better with different foods. Some people have food allergies, you know, but for the most part, I've seen this as a good fit for most people. Um, some people ask me, oh, what about the keto diet? Is that good, Dr. Yeah, yeah keto's good, like if you're battling cancer. Um, a lot of people don't do well on keto diet. They don't. And I'm not going to just recommend that it's, you know, it's good for everybody. And we, do gene, we do gene testing now. We can tell you right away if you're, if you're going to be able to process saturated fat or not, um, especially high levels of it. So I think what's safe for everybody really is more like a paleo kind of diet where you're having nuts, fish, meat, grass-fed uh, dairy, free-range chicken, stuff like that. Because that's going to get you to where you need to be. Where do you want to be? Heart healthy, right? Yes. Yeah. So, give you some examples. The breakfast of champion, uh, of champions. The shakes. You know, I talk about this all the time. You know, get, get, you get your uh, your coconut milk or your almond milk. You put a couple of scoops of the shake in there, and it's got uh, protein. It's got uh, low sugar. It's got your good fats in there, and you are off to the races. You got a complete uh, multivitamin spectrum. You got a low daily dose of your detox in there. You have antioxidants. Um, I have that shake every morning. Many of you guys are doing that. I wouldn't recommend anything else. You don't need to waste brain power. You don't have to risk having your blood sugar spike. And it'll save you time and money because that's just, it's automatically what goes down the hatch every single day. It's going to keep your blood sugar stable and help to keep it that way all day. Um, so we talk about the shakes all the time. The Ultraplex Complete Clean or the MetaClear does the same thing. Berries, berries and almond butter. Berries and almond butter. Again, breakfast of champions. You wanna have blackberries, blueberries, strawberries, uh, raspberries. So, you know, the almond butter is preferable to the peanut butter. Everybody know why that is, right? Mm -hmm. Peanuts carry 26 different types of fungus, even the organic peanut butter. All right, so a lot more toxicity with peanut butter. You want to have it on a cheat day every, every once in a blue moon? Not the worst thing in the world, but almond butter is a lot safer. You get the organic, not, not the roasted. You know, just try to, try to get with the organic. Um, so what's for lunch? Again, you got your healthy fats. You know, salmon Caesar or chicken Caesar. Put a little olive oil on there if you want. Throw the croutons out or tell them to bring it without the croutons. Uh, you got a Greek salad there, right? What's, what's, what's great about the Greek salad? Again, the Mediterranean diet and lifestyle. Mediterranean diet was shown in many studies to have huge heart health benefit, right? There's a lot of good healthy fats. The monounsaturated fats, the extra virgin olive oil, uh, flaxseed oil, all of the, the monounsaturated oils. When you look at these salads like this, you're hitting the bullseye for that. Anti-inflammatory, super heart healthy. So make sure you get that olive oil whenever you can. If you get a salad at lunch or you have vegetables at dinner, you want to douse that. Douse it. Don't measure it out. Just liberally pour that olive oil on. It will not make you fat. It'll help your heart and it'll help you burn fat. Right? You guys remember that? So what's for dinner? Uh, are we pounding? Is that the time to pound the, uh, the baked potato and the bread and the pasta? No. Not, not unless you want that belt to be tighter when you wake up in the morning. So if you, if you do that earlier in the day, you might be able to get away with it. <clears throat> but if you have those carbohydrates and you mix that with the protein, you're getting expansion. They don't mix well, and your body goes into fat storage instead of fat burning. The, the last place is dinner where you ever want to have those you know, starchy bread, rice, pasta cut type of carbs. So you want to have you know, vegetable, fibrous carbs. Uh, broccoli, you know, uh, uh, it's, it's cauliflower, you got, um, cut, cut beans, green beans, things like that. You, you, you're looking at uh, lamb chops there, right? Here you have a chicken breast and uh, green beans, and a little bit of cheese on there. And here you have a uh, shrimp stir fry, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, shrimp stir fry, yeah. So again, it, one, of the, one of the keys is making sure that you're cooking in the right oil. Otherwise, you get the bad fats and you trigger inflammation. Remember that? Right. So easy, you know, listen, just make your life easy. Hard, healthy start. First thing in the morning, make sure your glucose and your sugar levels stay in the normal range. Otherwise, if you're having croissants, cereal, toast, bagels, all that's going to make your blood sugar go up, put you in fat storing, and increase inflammation levels. 
That's why the shake is it helps you on this level. It helps you with your blood sugar. It helps you keep your weight down, and you got all your vitamins and minerals in there. Um, so you remember, pl replace your bad fats with good fats. I mean, you look at the labels um, on anything in your pantry. Look for these secret ingredients: cottonseed oil, soybean, vegetable oils. Very deceiving it, when it says vegetable oil. It's it's not good for you if it's vegetable oil, right? It's inflammatory. Uh, canola oil, and corn oil. So start looking for these things and avoiding them because it does damage to your heart and basically uh, causes every degenerative disease. Trans fats, please tell me nobody has margarine in their refrigerator anymore. <laughs> that face says it all, Sherry. Nah, no more. Okay. So make sure we have lots of extra virgin olive oil, avocados, avocado oil, coconut, coconut oil. These are the good fats, the healthy fats. They're good for your brain. They're good for fat burning. They're good for the cells to help regenerate, rejuvenate new healthy cells. Raw nuts and seeds, almonds, walnuts, very, very healthy. Now again, organic. Make sure that they're not processed. They're not roasted, salted. Uh, Grass-fed butter and meats. Cage-free organic eggs. Fatty fish. Make sure it's not farmed. Right? You guys know the difference, right? What do they feed it in the farm? Corn, soy. Corn and soy have the highest concentration of glyphosate, pesticides. Again, which increases your risk of senile dementia and Alzheimer's. We're in that food chain, guys. And by the way, I learned something this weekend about free range and organic chickens. If one of them has a cold, one chicken has a cold in a pen with hundreds of other chickens, they, even though it's organic and they advertise no antibiotics, they are allowed to treat one chicken and the whole flock with antibiotics if they're ill as a preventative means. Even though it says no antibiotics, they're allowed to do that for medical purposes for the chickens. Saturated fat. All right, so let's talk about this. Back in 1984, they said saturated fat causes what? Heart disease. A few years later, back in 2014, that was the cover of Time Magazine. They said, now we were wrong. Eat the butter, you need saturated fat. It's actually good for you. Bacon, butter, coconut oil. By the way, every once in a blue moon, you'll see uh, a cardiologist write an article that says, oh, that's, that's ridiculous. Stay away from saturated fat. It's like the old Junk science comes back, rears its ugly head from 30 years ago when they went to medical school. If you read something like that, throw it in the garbage. Throw it in the garbage. People bring that stuff into me all the time. What are your thoughts on this? I'm giving you all the research. So any of that stuff, there's no scientific validity to it. You need saturated fat. Does that give you a license to go out and eat bacon every day <laughs> until it comes out of your ears? No. But is there anything wrong with it? Will it cause your cholesterol to go up? No, it will not cause your cholesterol to go up when you have foods with high cholesterol con content or saturated fat. Did you know that? No. Every cell in your body requires saturated fat. The cell membrane is made up of, 50% of it is made up of what? Saturated fat. Heart muscles, heart muscle cells prefer what? Saturated fat for fuel. How about that? American Journal of Clinical Nutrition in 2010. 340,000 people, this is a pretty large study, huh? 340,000 people? They followed from five to 23 years. That's no joke. That's one of the largest heart trial studies that you're ever gonna read about. And here's what they found. The intake of saturated fat was what? Not, Not associated with an increased risk of coronary heart disease, stroke, or cardiovascular disease. So you, know, so you see it on the bottom. Bacon, eggs, there's your T-bone steak. What are they saying? Not associated with an increased risk of heart attack. In fact, they said the actual risk for heart disease were 19% lower than the people that ate the highest amount of saturated fat. Completely the opposite of what you've been taught. That's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Amazing, isn't it? So, they've known this for decades, even when President Eisenhower had a cardiologist. The more he lowered the president's diet of, of, uh, of cholesterol, the higher his cholesterol went, and he eventually had a heart attack. So you can't rob from Peter to pay Paul, right? The heart, your brain, every cell in your body needs cholesterol, and it needs what? Saturated fat. So 
Uh, obviously, there are, there are better choices in the sources that you get it from, yeah. right? But it's okay to eat some of this stuff sometimes. It's as part of your normal diet. Let's talk about some uh, heart healthy supplements. Um, there are many of you in this room who really need to, to consider this strongly because I don't expect you to stop taking all your medications cold turkey like we said. Furthermore, your heart needs time to heal and your body needs time to heal and it needs support, supplemental support. And I always tell you that, you know, if you're serious about your health these days, taking a supplement is, it's, it's not an option if you, want, if you want to see your health restored. It's an absolute requirement. You're not getting the vitamins any longer from your fruit, your vegetables, and all the sources that you think. It's gone. It's, the soil is impoverished. The, the, you know, all of the farming is just, it's a fraction of what it used to be. So we have to get serious about this stuff, guys. And you, you really need to consider getting on good, you know, um, supplements, supplemental support. And that's why I always talk to you about this. In particular, when we talk about a, a heart smart nutrition workshop, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna recommend stuff that's good for supporting your heart wherever you're at. Um, the Ultraplex Cardio has something in it called L-Arginine. L-Arginine is a precursor for nitric oxide. You ever see people take their nitric pills? They have to take their, their, their nitric pills for their heart. Well, L-Arginine is an amino acid, which is actually a precursor. It sets the stage for synthesizing something called nitric oxide. Your body can make it. And when it does, what it does is it causes the muscles in your heart to contract. The smooth muscle inside the arteries will actually contract and it will help to open the vessels up. And what does that do for your blood pressure? It can help to bring it down or maybe make it more stable. So um, if there's rigidity in your arteries, which many of you probably do have some, some level of that, atherosclerosis, it's very, very common. Most people do have it. This will help with that. Um, Ultraplex D, why is D important? Well, rickets and scurvy, right? 400 international units. Uh, we really missed the boat on that. <laughs> uh, decades went by and they finally realized <clears throat> how important vitamin D was for your immune system for preventing cancer. And now they're realizing it also for preventing cardiovascular disease. Um, so when we talk about heart health, you have to have a good vitamin D supplement and it cannot be a couple hundred international units a minimum of 5,000 international units, minimum. And uh, if you don't know what your vitamin D levels are, you really should be tested. And if your doctor hasn't done the blood test, again, we, do, we can do the finger prick, we can do it and find out where it is. Most people are deficient. It's almost, yeah. it's almost uh, across the board, most people don't get nearly enough. And some of you, 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 you need more than just one little 5,000 international. Some of you guys need 10,000 international. You need a lot to pick it back up. Um, so. Everybody should take at least one of these a day, depending on where you're at with that, but you should find out. CoQ10, we talked about how important that is, right? And we talked about how statin drugs strip the CoQ10 out. Um, and also a lot of the symptoms that we have from statin medications like vertigo, fatigue, shortness of breath, atrophy, pain, muscle pain, weakness. It's, it's because we don't have enough CoQ10. So that's, that's a supplement that will help to replenish that. Um, with or without the, 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 the statin medications, it also helps to promote cardiovascular health. Um, EPA, the fish oil caps. Um, this is something that has immense heart health uh, benefit, and which extends into other areas of your health as well. Lowers your blood pressure, prevents arrhythmia, promotes something called angiogenesis. Do you know what angiogenesis is? Genesis, the beginning, the creation of new healthy, Heart vessels, yeah. So if you got these suckers that are blocked up and not getting better but getting worse, your heart actually can circumvent that and make new vessels to bring oxygen to where it needs to go. The body's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Told you, it's not stupid, it's very smart. smart. Yeah, the power that made the body can heal the body. It does heal the body. So this actually supports that process of growing new blood vessels, lowers triglycerides, prevents blood clots, and counteracts inflammation. So if you get all four, it's 15% off. We only, we, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll have a few of them up there. For those of you guys who, who uh, want to get that, you can see them at the front desk before the end of the workshop tonight. Um, also, if you wanted to save some money, we can give you a 25% gift certificate. If you do a five-star Google review for us, 
How many of you guys have done a five-star Google review for us? Thank you, thank you, thank you. And that goes a long, long ways. You know why? How many people think? do you think read reviews? Now more than ever. Yeah, we had somebody uh, book a new patient appointment this Wednesday. Where'd they come from? Oh, they read our reviews online. So whoever wrote that review that, or you know, you guys put posted there, you cut it quite, quite possibly save that person's life. And that's why it's important to us to have you guys do that. So we really appreciate everybody doing it. If you take the time to do it, we'll bribe you and give you 25% discount. And that's what it's about. You know, we just care about people. We want to see see more people help. So this is one thing that's a win-win for everybody. Okay. Um, so just a few more minutes here, and then we'll, and we'll taper off. But insomnia is also linked to heart disease. Are you aware of that? If you're short on sleep, not only does it increase your risk of uh, hypertension and high blood pressure, um, this one shows uh, atherosclerosis. Compared to those getting seven to eight hours of sleep on a regular basis, those who sleep less are 27% more likely to have atherosclerosis, hardening of the arteries. Mechanisms by which insomnia and poor sleep affects your heart include, and this is getting really scientific here, hypothalamic pituitary axis that's in the brain where it, when it becomes dysregulated, increased sympathetic nervous system. How many of you guys have heard of the sympathetic or the autonomic nervous system? Where have you heard that before? Where have you heard that before? Here? Yeah. All right. You guys are you're with it. That's good. When we do the scans, here's where you heard it. When I do the scan, the HRV measures autonomic nervous system balance or imbalance. And people under regular chiropractic care, because we're removing interference from the brain-body communication, have better autonomic balance. And as a result of that, their blood pressure is better and they sleep better. And this is what science is showing. This is one of the causes of atherosclerosis and high blood pressure when you have interference or dysregulation of the autonomic nerve system. So you see how chiropractic can help that, yes? Yeah. So that's the autonomic nervous system. You have a part of your autonomic nerve system that speeds up your heart rate, your digestion, your respiration, and you have a part that slows everything down. And when that system is out of balance, your body cannot handle stress. You're more likely to succumb to a heart attack, or you're more likely for immune system to take a, a dive and get frequent colds or God forbid cancer. If your autonomic nervous system is out of balance, you cannot handle stress. If your autonomic nervous system is in balance, then your nervous system can comprehend its environment and it can adapt to stress more efficiently and effectively. And that's why studies show that people who are under chiropractic care long term, like five years or longer, their immune systems are 300% stronger. Wow. How many of you guys have been patients here five years or more? <coughs> 10 years or more, keep your hands up, keep your hands up, 10 years or more. Would you agree that since you've been getting adjusted, you, you get sick less often? Yeah, you, you, you get better reports from your doctors, right? All of your other friends are getting sick, dying like flies, and they're taking more medications, they're getting older. You're saving time and money, right? And it's because of this, the autonomic regulation of your nervous system. When you get adjusted, you allow that to take effect. There's a part of your spine that if you affect it, if you interfere with it, it can affect certain functions. Like in the upper neck, you can see how it affects your blood pressure. In the upper back, those are the nerves that go to the cardiovascular system, you can see how it can cause heart conditions. How does that occur? When the spine shifts out of alignment, whether you feel it or not, it disrupts the communication from the brain to the body. And you don't collapse in that moment but it shuts down the brain-body communication and eventually sets the stage for sickness and disease. Yeah. Still having problems with these videos. I apologize. Take blood pressure, it affects millions of people, in fact one out of every three Americans. And if left untreated, it can be deadly. Most people take medication to control it. But as Kate Merrill shows us, some patients have found a simple way to keep their numbers down without drugs. The mad dash to get the kids to school. The crazy commute. 
and especially work. It's enough to raise anyone's blood pressure. We work on deadlines, and with all the law changes, which keeps me in business, but keeps us also uh, pretty stressed out. Soon, that pressure from running his Cambridge accounting firm began to take a toll on Adrian Kaspar. He was forced to go on medication to control his blood pressure. I'm, I believe in not taking medication, but blood pressure you don't uh, fool around with. I just have you sit right here. Adrian. That's why he came here, here to Dr. Peter Martoni, a Linfield chiropractor, who's using a new adjustment in the neck to help bring down blood pressure. Now, if a bone is out of alignment and putting pressure on a nerve, it interferes with the ability for the heart to function correctly. In about two or three weeks, um, my blood pressure was normal. Bill Bird of Stoneham sells cars, another stressful job. He was also on blood pressure medication. After a few visits to Dr. Martoni, his doctor cut his medication in half. Another 30 to 45 days, my blood pressure staying at the levels it is. I'm going to be off at 100%. This treatment is experimental at this point, but studies show it might actually work. This is a very novel concept. Dr. George Bacris is an expert in high blood pressure. He's conducted a small, carefully controlled study with some of his patients at the University of Chicago Medical School. He sent them to a chiropractor for the same adjustment Dr. Martoni uses. We saw miraculous changes in blood pressure. We're seeing 12, 13 millimeter reductions in blood pressure. The results were dramatic enough to catch the attention of the federal government. The National Institutes of Health is now funding a larger study to see if they can duplicate the findings. So it's it's like a news news alert, news release, but the truth is that chiropractors have been doing this for 125 years. September 18th, next week, September 18th, 1895. Wow. That was the first chiropractic adjustment given. And it was a deaf janitor. His name was Harvey Lillard. It was a deaf janitor who had his hearing restored with a chiropractic adjustment. And that's in the history books. There's a bust and there's a statue on Brady Street in Davenport, Ira. That was the first chiropractic patient. You know what the second chiropractic patient came in with? Again, they didn't have cars back then, so it wasn't about car accidents. It was, he, was, he was a heart patient. <clears throat> he had a heart problem. And he had the function restored to his heart. So it's not that the adjustments cure people, but what it does is it removes the interference to restore the brain-body communication and allow the body to facilitate a healing response. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So, so here you see a, a hypertension specialist, a medical uh, doctor in a medical facility participating and actually seeing the same results. You know, When you remove interference from a nervous system, only one thing can happen. The body heals, the body gets better. You just have to find the right place, move the right bone, and stand back and give your body time to heal. So the problem is, is that when you have that nerve interference, what most people don't know is you don't feel it. Unless you have a trauma, like if you fall or have a car accident and your spine gets wrenched out of alignment, yeah, you can feel it. But how many of you have ever been to a dentist and they, and they take um, a film of your teeth, they take an x-ray, and you don't have any tooth pain, Right, and they put the x-ray up and they're like, oh, you got a cavity, right? What is that? That's, that's tooth decay. Do you feel tooth decay in the early stages? Yeah. No. no. Same thing with this. You don't feel spinal decay. You don't feel the degenerative disc disease. You don't, see, you don't feel the discs shrinking up until there's enough pressure on that nerve and it's like a kink in a garden hose. But in truth, it's been like that for a long time. And that could really be part of the reason why that person does, is not doing well in their health profile. Right. But, you, but, but they don't know until after they go from doctor to doctor. Right, Bonnie? You spend your every waking moment of your life going to doctors, chasing symptoms, chasing effects, instead of finding and correcting the cause and the source of the root. If the cause of your body's healing comes from inside, how could the cure come from the outside? Right? There's only one cause for a disease, and that's an interference to your body's ability to normal function and healing. So if there's only one cause, then there can only be one cure. Removing the interference to that and restoring the normal healing mechanism. That's why I say, I move the bone, God does the healing. Because God doesn't make junk. The power that made your body never left your body. It stayed on board. So you have nothing less than 100% potential to heal right now. Anybody with any disease. That body, that brain is ready, willing, and able 
to flow from above down in superabundance and go to work at any time. The missing link is finding where that interference is from stopping the body from doing what it was created to do. You know when you start watering plants, it's not rocket science. As soon as they start getting water, what? They spring back to life. That's it. That's all you got to do. You just got to give the body what it needs and it knows what to do. So that's what we do in this office. We check for subluxation. Pain or no pain. Men, women, children. It doesn't matter. When you have no interference to those nerve channels, you are expressing your health at your God-given potential. How many of you guys want to be at 100% of your God-given potential? Yeah, pain or no pain. That's the name of the game. Um, so how do you know? Well, waiting for pain is, is one way to do it. Not the best way, but it's one way. We take people who come in here, of course, you know, we're in the business of, of helping people feel better, but we're also in the business, the more important part of it, of helping people achieve their God-given potential for health. And so we don't guess, we test. When, when, some, when a new patient comes in, sit down with me for a few minutes, I'll get a history, find out a little bit about you, we'll go over to the other side of the clinic, do an exam, we do a thermal scan. If the thermal scan in my examination shows that you have a problem there, then I may recommend x-rays. And then if we take the x-rays, we put the x-rays with the scan, and we get a whole health picture of what's happening. If the scan and the x-rays show us that there's damage in the spine, and that's in the area of a health problem that you have, then that's important to know. If the scan and the x-rays show that you have damage in your spine and you don't have any problem, that's an even more important time to know. Why? Because if you can nip disease in the bud before it has a chance to rear its ugly head, what is that worth? A heck of a lot more than the treatment of chemotherapy, radiation, and all the medication that you take for decades. Yep, an ounce of prevention is worth pound of cure. Yeah. So more than anything, I would recommend this for prevention. But if you're a guest here tonight and you've never had your spine checked or haven't had it checked in a long time, be our guest. Have it checked here. Um, on behalf of the person, the loved one, friend, family member who brought you in today, we're going to offer you an opportunity to do that. Because normally it's several hundred dollars to do that, with or without insurance. Um, but we, we're, we're doing something special this whole month for the hurricane relief. And for $47, we will do the consultation, the examination, the x-rays, and the report of findings for only $47. Now, I will tell you this, the, the people of the Bahamas, we're 100% behind our church and a local church there in Abaco. It's Tabernacle Baptist Church. And the pastor came to our church and he was preaching and um, I'm behind everything that we can do to get them relief as quickly as possible through our church. Uh, we've, we've sent over generators and towels and food and I have a <clears throat> chainsaw back here and water. Some, of, some, some people have dropped some things in there. So um, if you're a guest here, you want to have your spine checked, that $47, 100% of it is going to go to this um, relief fund that we're gathering up. We're doing it the whole month of September. Okay. So, so if you're here tonight and you want to book that appointment, there's two ways you can do it. I mean, just book the appointment. If you're serious about your health, pay the $47. We're donating 100% of it. So. But don't make the appointment if you just, you're, you're really not concerned about your spine, but you just want to raise money for them. We'll take your money. We don't want to waste your time. <laughs> All right. um, but, but, but most importantly, um, we, we want people to benefit from this. So if you have a health issue or not, or you're serious about having your spine checked, please make the appointment. 100% of the money is going to the, to the charity. Uh, but if you want to donate financially, you can do that. Um, or if you want to bring stuff the rest of the month, please bring. There's a list. There's, I think it's in your handout of what we're accepting there. So I want to encourage everybody to do that. We have, uh, we have ships going out uh, every week, and we're just going to collect all this for the month of September. Uh, Deborah is over there. Can you raise your hand, Deborah? For those of you who are guests, you want to see Deborah make your appointments. She'll be available. And um, the, the, the offer is for the guests, it's, it's good for you tonight. Now, if you have family members or friends that you know need to benefit from this, uh, we'll even extend it to them. For, for this, the $47 relief month, only because we really want to try to gather up as much support as possible. So we're going to do that. And it's, it's we're basically, financially, we're going to send everything through our church from our office. So any checks that are made out, make it out to Elevation Health, and then Elevation Health is making out one lump sum check to the local church over there. So that's how we're going to do it. All right. Um, so that's it. Make application. Um, information without application is 
hallucination. <laughs> so, we don't want to hallucinate. Do something with what you learned tonight, right? Get on the supplements, make your appointments, uh, whatever it is, if it's for a weight loss program or the, the CRP inflammation testing or guests make your appointments there. Or make sure you get scheduled for next month's workshop too. All right, thank you guys so much for coming tonight. Love and appreciate you. God bless.